morning. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you very much. I uh, just want to say congratulations on such an epic TV show. It is just, I'm halfway through it and it's blowing my mind already. <laughs> <laughs> um, good. That was, that was the goal. Um, oh, I've, I've been told that there is still so much more to come. I'm like episode five. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love episode five. So that was Gail's backstory. And um, but there's a there's definitely a lot of big stuff to come. Um, we didn't release the last two episodes because literally we were still working on them. I was at a VFX review for episode 10 last night. Um, and then we're finally shipping that off. But hopefully it's a satisfying conclusion. Amazing. Well, um, I just wanted to, to start off really with we're talking about what drew you to Isaac Hasamoff's work and why did you want to adapt this for the screen? Um, I mean, obviously, uh, the challenge was, was um, part of it. But I think at this point in my career, having worked on a lot of really uh, darker projects, uh, and now that I'm a father, I wanted to do something that at its root um, conveyed a message of hope. Asimov was writing in the golden age of science fiction when they thought science could solve everything. Asimov had a lot of faith in humanity and human ingenuity, and, and that was um, a message that, that I believe in as well, that I wanted to convey. And, and uh, I think it's only become more relevant uh, in the three years since we started this pro you know, project. It's, I could never have imagined, I always thought Foundation was topical, but I could never imagine how prescient it would become uh, over the last few years. Absolutely. Um, definitely, <clears throat> even just the first episode, I was like, this is so like our real life going on right now with the, the COVID deniers, anti-vaxxers, climate change deniers, and yeah. all that, you know, the conflict between science, politics, and uh, religion all come into play here. So. How, yeah. Did you draw much parallels from our, our world into this world? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when Asimov was writing uh, the books, he was writing in a post-World War II in, environment. He was looking at the realignment of all these empires that were falling uh, across Europe and the ascension of America. And the first thing I said to the Asimov estate is, is he, I said, Foundation is a social allegory. He was writing about his contemporary world, but that's 70 years removed from where we are now. So I've got to be able to reference where we are now if the show is going to function as a mirror. So I said, Brexit, Me Too, climate change, the rise of nationalism, you know, confirmation bias, all of those things. That, that's what we have to interrogate because it's not really a show about the future. It's a show about now. It's about who we are now. And it's a show about are we as a society or as individuals and as a society willing to sacrifice something for future generations? Absolutely. Um, and it's also a kind of tale about um, even though there's these, these, these big elder figures, it's all about the younger generation coming forward and implementing these ideas, whether they're the, the old generation before them were, were wrong or right in what they were theorized. Yeah, I mean, uh, Harry Seldon says at the end of the first episode that change is frightening, especially for those in power. Um, it's always the old guard that fears change, that are the most rigid. They fear being replaced. They fear becoming irrelevant. And so they cling to power often long after they really should be clinging to power. Um, and that that is <laughs> something very human and something I think we can all look to various examples of in our world today. Absolutely. Um, so uh, then bringing in this talented cast to play all these, these characters that range from new faces to familiar faces, what was the challenge in getting the right roles here? Well, when we were in the writer's room, I do what's called fantasy casting, and I put up pictures of people that were imagining, you know, in the roles. Uh, in the case of Harry Seldon, there was a picture of Jared Harris. In the case of <laughs> Brother Day, there was a picture of Lee Pace. It never happens that you get the people that you're writing the roles for. So my hope was always to, you know, um, have these two pillars, these two, you know, incredible actors as the foundation, no pun intended, and then to populate 
the show with a lot of new faces, at least for uh, an American audience or perhaps a Western audience. Uh, we cast all over the world. We cast in 17 different cities. Um, I really wanted Gail to be a discovery. Uh, I think this was Lou's uh, only her second job. It was important to me as well. The first book has virtually no female characters. So it was important to me that the, the, the cast of the show reflect today's audience and reflect the kind of global reach that Apple is you know, trying to implement with their service. Um, like I said, the, the show is a mirror. So it has to be a mirror of today and not a mirror of you know, the late 40s, early 50s. That's great. Well, um, it's a fun, phenomenal film, uh, TV show, and I really can't. I'll take it. film. We wanted it to be cinematic. <laughs> well, it, I mean, it's every every aspect of it. It, it is just mind blowing, and I can't wait for audiences to watch this. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Oh, you're so uh, welcome. Good luck with the rest of the series. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!